reporting in progress. We're good. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I have six o'clock and a quorum of commissioners, so I will open up tonight's Conservation Commission meeting for Thursday, June 29th, 2023. We are meeting here in the Wakoyat Meeting Room, Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North. Uh, this meeting is also being broadcast live on local cable channel 18, as well as streamed live on the Town of Mashpee website. Uh, I'm going to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would like to join me, please do. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we begin tonight, I'm going to ask for a moment of silence in the memory of Ray Jack, uh, a colleague of ours who everybody here is completely devastated with the loss. It's not only a loss to the staff here at Town Hall and those of us on boards and commissions that worked with Ray, it's indeed a loss to the entire town. So I would ask you uh, for a moment of silence in Jack's memory, Ray Jack's memory. Thank you. At this time, I will take public comment from anyone that is here or online for any issues that are not related to the agenda items that we have scheduled for this evening's meeting. So this is the time to speak on other topics if somebody has something. Hearing and seeing no one, nobody online through for that? Nobody online. Okay, then I'll move on to pre and post hearing agendas. Uh, I guess we have time, we'll get the minutes out of the way first. Uh, the approval of the meeting minutes for June 15th, 2023, and the commissioners that will be voting on that this evening would be Paul Colombo, Alexandra Zolo, Stephen Cook, Marjorie Claprood, Aaron is not here tonight, and Sandra Godfrey. Did you people have time to look at the minutes and you okay with everything that's in there? Yeah, I'm fine. I saw one little typo that um, on the votes for various things, um, it said like five, one, and zero, and the one was an abstain. I think typically it's five, zero, one, right? Is that the way it should be laid out? I think so. Yeah. Right. But the names were listed as to who did what, but I just wanted to point that out, but everything else was fine, so I saw nothing else. Okay, any other discussion on the minutes before I call for a vote? Hearing none, uh, Alex, I'll start with you. Yes. Do we need a motion to accept oh. the minutes? <laughs> That's an idea. I make a motion to accept the minutes of June 15th. <laughs> Thank I'll, you. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, I do. I want to say that's a great example of why Stephen was nominated and unanimously selected to be our secretary. Checks and balances are good. <laughs> and he catches you. It's just a little parliamentary glitch. He will have many opportunities in the year ahead. I think he will. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Should. Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Alex, again? Yes. <clears throat> Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandra? Yes. I vote yes as well. Motion carries unanimously. I think I'll wait on the discussion and the other updates and sure. we'll move right to the first scheduled hearing. So I will now call the six o'clock hearing for Kenneth E. Marsters, second 53 Lakeview Drive. This is for the proposed construction of an in-ground pool landscaping and hardscaping. The representative is Prime Properties Limited Partnership, and this is an amended order of conditions. I don't see the number on here, but that's what it is. So, Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Marsters um, with Prime Properties. 
That's my son, Ken, second. Um, before I start with my little spiel, my presentation, we did get a phone call from Dan today about some erosion control that we had. Probably happened about a week ago, if you remember that weekend we had all that rain. That's exactly when we happened. We, it happened. Uh, we've been on top of that erosion control since the day this house has been built. We're on our second set of uh, siltation sock and our second set of uh, siltation fence. As a matter of fact, I um, asked Drew and he graciously accepted to come down about, I'd say two months ago, to take a look at it because we knew we were going to have some issues with um, the erosion. Um, and um, we came up with some, you know, I said, what should I do long term? And you know, we, we worked it out. But short term wise, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's a very difficult site with a lot of slope on it. Um, but we will keep our eye on it and we will fix the, about the 15 foot patch of about 200 feet that we have there. So we've been on top of it, but it's just, a, and it won't happen, it would be this bad once we get everything done that we have to be, do that we need to be doing. So, and when, where, where the silvitation fence breached is, um, it's right onto a little sandy pathway. So it might look like it's, that's the siltation. Some of it's siltation, but a lot of it's a sandy pathway that's pre-existed me since I've owned the property since 1986, and it's been used by neighbors probably a lot before 1986 to, to access the pond down there where they go fishing and swimming and whatnot. So we'll, we'll fix that, we'll dig it out, we'll put some more socks in there, and um, we'll stay on top of that fence like we have been doing diligently for the last year and a half if that's okay with the um, commission, because I knew that would be a good question. Um, I was on the site yesterday, uh, and it's not the worst erosion that I've seen in my career, <laughs> but it's right up there. Uh, you're about to go on to your third set of siltation fence, because right. the one that's there is completely overrun. It's buried. And the first one's buried. Right, in some sections, of the, nothing, not, I don't think there's another, is there other sections buried? We had this filtration. Pretty much dead center of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we had the. That's um, completely under. Yeah. And the siltation, actually, I paced it off. Uh, if you go to the southerly boundary of the property, mm -hmm. it's a good 60 feet down that grassy path onto somebody else's property. Um, there's that's a lot the, that's of the lot. That's the lot. Yeah. The lot goes back another 100 feet or so. Are you talking it? To the south? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, you're a good 60 feet down yeah. from, you know, where you've excavated That's, around. Yeah. Uh, my inclination is that um, I would like to see the integrity of everything restored before we go on to the amended order of conditions. I mean, it's pretty hard to say to an applicant, yes, let's keep going in sight of the fact that we have a mess on our hands. Wow. Um, maybe I didn't see it the way you saw it, to tell you the truth. I apologize, but um, so what should I do? Just to get out, put more siltation fence in? Versus well, just, repairing, just repairing it right away? As, as I, you know, I've been a very good soldier, and Drew, I think, has to back me up here. We, I've, I've kept my eye on it. You know, and I even proposed to ask to Drew, if he, I said, do you want me to put a wall in there? And he said, you probably don't need to. And we probably won't need to once we have everything done. That's for darn sure. I guess the only question I have is that that site visit was a while ago and still the site failed. So there wasn't anything done in the meantime, and I, I concur with the chairman's recommendation that this should be fixed before you move on to any other requests, and then we need to verify that it has been fixed through a site visit. Then I think it makes sense to move on with the proposal. But in the meantime, we need to make sure that this, because this is bad, this is really bad, and, and it hasn't been, that site visit wasn't just last week, it was a while ago. Were you and I? Yes. Two months. Yeah. Two months ago, so, yeah. And, and it was what, good. You didn't say anything about the facilitation fence breaching then, did you? No. 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 So it's, but, it's, it's but failing. I'm, no, I'm that's just, my point. Please let me finish. Yeah. Okay. I concur with the chairman's recommendation. I don't think it's any huge delay, but I think we need to see this fixed first. So we can all be on the same page that the site has been restored, everything has been cleaned up as it should be. Then I think it's clear to move forward. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, okay. I also and, and that would just be encompassing digging some new siltation fence, maybe right behind it, Drew, and putting another whole set of siltation fence in with, this, with the rest of it, Cleaning too. up anything that's, you know, inundated close to the wetland. We need, to, I think, a site visit to clearly assess how far this runoff has reached towards the wetland. But we can, can I, clearly identify all the areas that need to be cleaned up. The, the wetland from the siltation fence is 70 feet. I'm just giving you. I don't think I don't think that any of that wash has gone more than ten yeah, feet. Let's correct. Make sure. Well, let's make when, sure. when I was on the property yesterday, I 
tried to go beyond the silt fence, but there's a lot of vegetation there, including poison ivy. But mm -hmm. I pulled it back, I looked, I kind of estimated, and I could see silt at least 20 to 25 feet further out from the siltation fence, and then the slope is straight down. So I got to assume there's even more down the slope. So what I'm looking at is the buffer zone that has a tremendous amount of silt intrusion and that buffer zone's integrity needs to be restored. I mean, could why I, would we- Could I why? request a visit with, with Drew so we might, we're on the same page? So I, I want to do it right. That's, in, that's the reason why I want to do it. Could I have 10 minutes of your time? I'd like to hear what Paul has to say. Can you okay. let him finish? All right. <laughs> I might need a little help. Okay. I'm gathering my thoughts back. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, so, just want, I just want to do it right. That's why. Okay. You know? Another thing that I noticed when I was there yesterday and I haven't pulled out the original order of conditions and all of the, the plans and documentation. Um, I looked very carefully at all of the downspouts and, and the black corrugated pipes that go into the ground, and I'm assuming that they're into what would be an appropriate size dry well. Many dry wells throughout the property. Yeah, if, yeah okay. many, yeah, diffusers. The amount of Diff rainfall, we, we've had two different storms, 1.35 yeah. inches, mm -hmm. and the one before that was less than an inch. Yeah. I'm thinking, what would have happened if we had a four-inch event or a five-inch event? Those drains were completely overrun. You can see the dent with the existing drain or the constructed drainage system that you have. It should be able to take two storms of less than two inches. That's probably, Paul, if it's my guess, is coming from the slope from the street. Those tanks that we have up on the existing system that's tied to the dry wells are three feet in the ground. No, so that's, I think that might be erosion coming from the street to the driveway and going off to the driveway. You know, what I was looking at is here's your downspout coming off the house, and you get your black corrugated pipe. You only see about that much of it, right. and then it's buried. There's a dendritic pattern coming right off of that downspout. It goes right over towards the house, undercuts the new patio blocks that are in there. They're caving in, and then it goes further down, and it goes into those. There are ravines that have to be seven feet deep. Here again, I'd love to be able to go out there with yeah, somebody think, to take a look at I it. I think either Drew or yeah, Dan. Yeah, we want to do it right. You know, vacation yeah, right now, so. we want to do it right. Uh, and Dan, you were on that site as well. Yes, I didn't check the house at all. I was just looking at the back where the yeah. post was. The erosion control um, in that whole backyard. The house itself, I didn't. I didn't yeah. Know. Well, I tried to figure out what was causing it, so I went right up to the pipes. Sandy, you were there as well. Um, and but Paul, she concurred all that me. water that's coming into that p corrugated pipe right. is going into the ground, so it's not coming from the gutter system itself. My, my assumption from what I could see, I could yeah. see a circular depression around it, is that the whole system was backing up. Maybe it's because it's such a quick event, I don't know, but yeah. when you look at it, you can see a well around the corrugated pipe, you can see the dendritic patterns coming off of that well in the, the soil. And then you, it heads right into those deep ravines. And I said, if I get in those ravines, I wouldn't get out. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah. bad. Here, I don't know. I'd like to go look at with, with somebody. So yeah, I think it's something that can be fixed very easily. But I, but I need help. Yeah. I need help. Yeah. I think what you should do <laughs> is. Well, I don't need help. But I mean, I just want to make sure we're on the same sure. page. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm seeing things a little differently. And I just want to cooperate yeah. and work and do it right. Well, That's what I've been doing for the last 37 years. My position, and again, it's just me, yeah. I, I don't carry a majority vote here. I would like to see the integrity of the site restored before we move further down the road. And we'll do that. We don't, you don't even need to take a vote. I'll, I'll, I'll do that because right. you, feel, you feel passionately about it. And I don't have a problem doing that. That's, yeah. a, that's the right way to do it, then we'll do it that way. Perfect. Um, I would suggest that you call the office tomorrow. Yeah. And set up a time and a date, either with Dan or, or Drew. But and then yeah. we can call take it from there. Sure. Yeah, and I we'll appreciate that. Continue to hear it. Yeah, yeah, because because when the next meeting when we're done, I want to say, hey, did it? He did it the way we wanted him to do it. That's what yeah. I want to hear. Okay. That, All right. That's, that's awesome. Like we can do it. <laughs> okay. Sure. Thanks so much. All right. So let's um, let's set a time and a yeah. date. So it's uh, July thirteenth, six twenty one. Seven thirteen. Six. Twenty one. Twenty one p.m. Okay. So we have a request for a continuance uh, to July 13th, 6.21 p.m. Can I have a motion for that? Yeah. So Thank can you I just so move it? Or do you want me to say it out loud? Like, Say it out loud. Go okay. ahead. Okay. 
for the I make a request to continue 53 Lakeview Drive to July 13th at 6.21 p.m. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Steve. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandra? Yes. I vote yes as well. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Have a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling the 603 hearing for Thomas and Joan Marie Amaletto, trustees, 48 Quaker Run, proposed construction of pier ramp and float. Representative is Shorefront Consulting. This is a notice of intent. Good evening, gentlemen. If I could have your names for the record. Yes, sir. Um, Mark Burgess of Shorefront Consulting, and this is Tony Annaletto, the applicant next to me. Good evening. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for hearing us. So I'll start out with a brief description. Um, originally, this was a dock that was 151 feet long. That's the, that's the official plan that's before you tonight. Uh, it was 151 feet long, extending 160 feet beyond mean high water. Uh, the dock joins the existing steps and was aimed to get the closest edge of the channel to have three feet of water on the landward side of the floats, uh, 3.8 feet seaward. And the, the docks followed up by a three by 20 foot ramp and an eight by 24 foot float. So I, I, I positioned it on the edge of the channel, if you will. Uh, so it, we didn't have to do any dredging, we had plenty of clearance, that was my reasoning. And I even slanted the float to angled the float to match the contour, so the depth was even all the way across. Um, after that, well, in, in addition, we have one set of access stairs to the beach because we maintain five feet of clearance to the underlying structural member as required by Chapter 91. Um, this grading is proposed over the marsh area. The dock also includes two kayak racks, one on each side and a two by eight foot storage bench, uh, which is also allowed by Chapter 91. Out at, and the bench is out at the end of the dock. We were located in National Heritage. Uh, they did respond with a no take letter, which you should have in your, in your records. Division Marine Fisheries responded. Uh, they had no restrictions. They just had preferential comments for consideration, if you will. One was uh, they listed some potential impacts from the piles and the dock in general, uh, but they didn't give any suggestions to avoid that. The graded decking was okay, but they still want their six feet of clearance to the underlying structural member. This is a very, very standard comment in every, everywhere where I go where I do a dock where I start at five feet, I get this comment. Um, and I've spoken to them at length, but uh, they just keep going higher and higher as the years go by. Um, we set it at five feet because I felt that was the reasonable height and with the grading, you get additional light through the grading to the vegetation below. I've done lots of docks at this height and the, the marsh doesn't seem to suffer to me, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the other condition or suggestion was uh, not to have the barge ground during construction, of course, and, no, and of course no uh, fuel spills. And I actually emailed them back because they mentioned that it was, a, that was um, the fish passage and things like that. And I said, well, do you have a time of year restriction? Usually we do. And they said, no, nope, because they didn't think that the dock would impact the migration, I guess. So, so there definitely is no time of year restriction from DMF on this one. Um, we've got our comments from the shellfish and the harbor master. The shellfish warden deferred to the harbor master because uh, the harbor master didn't, didn't like the original design. Um, I was able to get in contact with him and we discussed moving the dock landward so that there was 18 inches of clearance uh, on the landward side of the float. That would shorten the dock 51 feet, which is significant. You have you know, less piles, less structure, and, and it's much far, further out of the way. I believe you should have an email from him that confirmed he was able to look at the plan and he was cool with that modification. Um, so 18 inches minimum is the recommended minimum according with the small dock and pier guidelines. 
and that's 18 inches on, on all sides of the float, unless the area is, quote, significant to shellfish, in which case they want 30 inches. I don't know if the area is significant to shellfish, and I don't know what standard you would go by to measure sig the significance, but we started at 18 inches. So that shortens the dock by 51 feet. Um, did we get any other comments from Mr. Avis um, regarding the revised plan that was sent? Yeah, so he's going to write one up once it's a stamped plan. Uh -huh. Right now it was just a draft of the revisions. Correct. And we also received it with, not within the five, uh, before, after the five-day window. Yes. Um, so once there's a stamp plan and all's looked through and approved or whatnot, he will come up with a shellfish mitigation. Plan. All right, great. And, um, okay, so I guess with that, so I have hard copies of the plan. And, yes, I know I'm well, I'm well, I'm well aware that I'm within the, the deadline for a revised plan. I, I get it. I do have them here if you would like them. And if we have to, it depends on how the commission wants to handle it. So I'm assuming you want to continue to get the plan stamped and get the... Um, yeah, so depending on how it goes tonight, <laughs> I would definitely recommend having that plan stamped as soon as possible. Yep. Um, so I think tonight's most definitely going to be a continuance till the next hearing um, okay. because of everything. Does the commission have any feedback based on shortening the dock 51 feet? That's the only change. It just it gets shorter 51 feet. You have 18 inches of water on the landward side of the float, a couple of inches more on the seaward side. Um, so before I go through all that formal revision, does anybody have any thoughts? Do you, have, do you have any other uh, comments to make regarding the project? And then I will go around with my commissioners and we did get a file number. Comments. I never, I never got the notice, but I looked on the DEP website. We do have a file number. Okay. I have a copy of this for you if you want. Sure. It's the first time I've never gotten a letter. Thank you. The transmission. That's just printed off the website. You don't get the actual yeah, letter that we get. Yeah, it's not the one we normally number. get. Yeah. I know. But yeah, there's the number. So, okay. But there's a number there. I guess with that, we'll open it to questions. Great. So let me uh, poll commissioners first. Um, Steve, do you want to start? Uh, sure. So when I visited the site, I saw two PVC posts or pipes sticking out of the water. I'll, I'll pass. This location is that like right? That's what that's how I staked it out. That's where the end of the the first slope would be. Right, the landward PVC pipe is the end of the dock, and the further one out is the center line of the float. Okay, I, I thought that. I figured I'd verify that. Yep. Then, uh, did the harbor master address that more? And that was just past those two pipes that you had out there. Uh, the mooring belongs to Mr. Anoletto. Okay, okay, I'm on to that. Check that out. Didn't know because it was fairly close. Didn't know who it was. Yep. Okay. Um, those are the only questions I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alex, do you have anything you'd like to question or suggest? How does that work? If the morning belongs to him, but it's not in like perpetuity that it belongs to one person, correct? Like if he doesn't keep up with the fees, it can then go to somebody else, right? If he doesn't keep up the fees, yeah. If it, so the mooring could pass to somebody else. So if the mooring is an, is an issue with the dock, like has that been? It's close, I saw it. Yeah, has it, I mean, I know. has the Harbor Master commented on that? Right, if we're, right. The, the proposed plan, like I said, I have some hard copies here if you want to take a look at it, but. And you guys have a PDF. You could put it up in the... Uh, the picture on the bottom right up here is the mooring and the two posts right behind it. Right, but the, the revised plan that I, that I submitted, that was a PDF also. At any rate, the dock would be 51 feet shorter, so 51 feet further away from the mooring. Oh, okay. It, okay. No, and the apartment master had no worries at that okay. point. Okay, right. Yep. Anything else? Marjorie, questions? Comments? No, the only question that I had was the Board of Health comments. Uh, no applicability to this. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming all work would be done by the water, from the water? Yeah. 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 Okay. So 
their only comments are if heavy equipment is driving through the property to get just to the make coast, sure that it's not that it's, that it's not going to disturb the uh, the loading capacity of the. You know where you get heavy equipment down there. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. Sandy. Now I had concerns with the mooring also, but that's been answered. So. Okay. Uh, my question is: is a, a plastic jug. That's, I mean, it looks like a baby mooring, but it's not. It's a plastic jug. Is that a marker of some kind, either for you or for the next one over? I it's agree. clearly I, there and attached. And Where is it? Um, it's, as you're standing looking at those pipes from the land, yes. it's just down the street to my right. Oh, I have no idea. I don't even remember if I saw something like that while I was motor, motoring by to stake it out, but I, I have no idea. I saw... To me, it looked like an abandoned kayak on the shoreline. It was filled with oak leaves. It looks like it has been out for a while. So I don't know if they blue. put it out there. I, I just blue. didn't know what it was. No, no idea. It caught my eye. It looked like it was. Well, so the neighbor has an illegal flood. Approved by uh, Chapter 91, you're going to give up that mooring and use the dock for your boat, or are you going to keep the mooring as well? I think you'll keep the mooring. You're going to keep the mooring as well. So you'll have a boat at the mooring, and you'll have boats at your Potentially. Potentially, but right now one boat. For the dock? Correct. Okay. Do we have the information on that boat? Yes. Oh. It's, been, it's, been, it's been moored here for 20, 22 years. Okay. All right. So 20, 20, 20 26 foot uh, Bertram okay. outports. And uh, Mr. Annalito says it can navigate uh, just fine in 18 inches of water. 18. Okay, I have no further questions then. Um, let me, um, True, are there any questions or comments that you would like to? Just to reiterate that <coughs> the um, shellfish constable wants to see the stamp plan, so he, yeah. he's not coming up with a shellfish mitigation calculation fee uh, until the plan is stamped, and then he'll work on that. So he's, he's not deferring to the harbor master for his own purposes. He is going to calculate out what uh, would be a suitable shellfish mitigation fee. It's a one-time fee as mitigation for all docks and piers yep. that uh, are in areas mapped as land containing shellfish. I'm, I'm familiar with that process, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, before I ask for a motion, um, is there anyone in the audience at a butter or someone that has questions or concerns? from what's been presented tonight? Yes. Can you, if, if you're going to speak, I would like you to come up to the table so because it's, it's on television. We want to make sure everybody can hear. And if I can have your name and address for the record. Sure. Um, this is John Penticus. I'm in butter. I live at 58 Quaker Run Road. And um, no comments. I was just really um, was here to better understand if the 30 inches of navigational water was 100% necessary. Um, but after the Harbor Master comments, I'm fine with what's being proposed, and um, I hope my neighbor enjoys his dock when it um, comes up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. How uncharacteristically nice. I know. <laughs> Yay, good luck. Okay, then. I'll entertain a motion. Is this is to continue? To continue. What's the date and time? So the date would be, this is, uh, let's make sure I got the right address here. It's not on here already, right? Okay. So this would be, yeah, uh, July 13th at, seven, at 624. 624 p.m. July 13th at 620? 624. 624. Okay. My phone says I can do that. Okay, then. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for the continuance. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, make a motion to continue the hearing for Thomas and Joe Marie and Aledo Trustees 48 Quaker Run Road to July 13th at 6.24 p.m. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion before I call for a vote? I do want to discuss one thing. Yes, Alex. If there are other continuances tonight that are not already slotted for a time before that, I think they need to go to the following hearing because that's already that. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Does that make sense? So what <clears throat> you said to the 13th, it's going to be booked after this continuance? Anything after this one that gets continued should go to the following we'll hearing. If we're going to continue anything else tonight, because that's gotcha. we're already at filled. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I will take a roll call vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. Motion carries unanimously. So yeah. that'll be what? July 13th, 624. Oh, that was Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's usually going right in here. Thank you. I'll take a vote. Yeah, give me the stand. That'd be a vote Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. We will now call the 606 hearing for Peter and Patricia Briggs, trustees, 35 James Circle. This is a proposed construction and maintenance of an attached garage, utilities, hardscaping, and landscaping. Representative is Cape and Islands Engineering, and this is a request for determination of applicability. Good evening, sir. Good evening. For the record, Raul Lizardi from Cape and Islands Engineering, representing the applicant and the homeowners at this um, property, uh, 35 James Circle. Um, the project it lo is located along the southeast shores of Johns Pond. So the wetland resources on the property and within 100 feet is Johns Pond, land under the ocean, I'm sorry, land underwater. Um, there's an inland bank associated with Johns Pond a deep inland bank, and then there's a subsequent Mashpee inland bank associated to the property. The applicant is proposing to construct a garage. Um, the garage is proposed to be at the location that's currently developed with the paved driveway, which is the parking that he currently used. There is existing patios on the lower level. The house is a walkout type of house. so. The garage is going to span over onto what would be a walkout level. The portion that's going to be two stories because it goes all the way to the walkout is going to be storage. The front portion of the garage will be the garage. Um, the part of the garage is slab on grade. There is no increase in flow. Um, the entire area is within a developed um, portion of the site. Um, and I believe the applicant did meet with the town building department with Drew, I believe, at Conservation, and with the Health Department for this project. And this has been filed with um, the Board of Appeals because of setbacks um, requirements that this, pro this project does not meet. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. And this case was already heard by the Zone no. Board of Appeals? It's been applied for. Been applied for. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Questions from commissioners. I had a question about the trees. I noticed that um, there were some birch trees, and you've indicated that those are going to be removed and then replaced in kind. So yes, um, it's just off the first pictures on on the screen right now. So the homeowner is a landscaper. So he's got a cluster of um, birch trees right. at that location. He believes that he can install this foundation for this garage without having to remove them, but he is willing to replace them if he has to take them down. And also, down along the same line, there's a couple of other good-sized trees that I, I guess that's those little two squiggly things down at the end here. But you're not indicating so that those will need to be removed. They so the, la the landscaping that he currently has there, he's willing to restore it after this garage goes in. There's, in terms of trees, on the picture to the top right, those trees that you can see kind of on the, on the left of that picture, those are far enough from all the work, so those would not be affected. Well, I have a question. So, um, under the building comments, 
mentions a variance. So I'm just a little confused with that. If why would a variance be needed if the SUS is pre-existing non-conforming and it's within the 25-foot front setback? Would that be a special permit versus a variance? So it's not the front setback. It's the size setback. Right. But if it's a pre-existing non-conforming building, wouldn't it be a special permit? Yeah. So the, the existing house meets site setbacks. The garage will not meet the site setback. Right. So it needs a variance because it's a new non-conformity. Just, uh, just from my experience, is a variance is difficult to attain versus a special permit. But if this house is pre-existing non-conforming, wouldn't it be a special so permit instead of a variance? It's, it's a two, I'm not an expert on, on Board of Appeals, but okay. it's a two process. It's a special permit variance application. It's a pre-existing non-conforming structure to front setback. Um, and then the addition creates a new non-conforming in setback. So they have to cover both cases. Okay. That's my understanding. I'm just concerned that if this committee uh, approves this plan, but then get, you get denied at ZBA, is that an issue? Right. right. So with, with any, the, any project will have to get approval from all the required boards, commissions, and departments. If one of them does not approve the project, then any other permit that was already acquired gets voided. Good. Okay. That was, that was my, uh, just my, my main concern there. It's, Is that connected to the, anything at all to do with Title V? No, no, it's just, it was just for the zone setbacks. It's bringing it within 9.4 feet of the property line, which is pretty, you know, pretty tight. Pretty tight, right. Yeah, and typically it's a 15-foot side setback. So um, I was just concerned that if we grant approval and issue an RDA for, and it gets denied ZBA, it just, you know, just spin our wheels here a bit. So yeah, the, the addition cannot be constructed if Board of Appeals does not approve it. Right. Yeah, I understand that. So what did the Board of Health, I don't know if I should be asking you, Raul, or asking you, Drew. What is the Board of Health uh, telling us here with the Title V inspection required when there's a change of footprint? which applies here, correct? Yeah, so this is pretty standard comments from the Board of Health <clears throat> that the property is in a zone two restricted to three bedrooms with existing conventional system. The addition of any <coughs> habitable space over the garage that meets the definition of a bedroom in Title V would be considered an increase in flow and then require a septic upgrade in compliance with all provisions and, and require an IA on-site septic system. So it's all dependent on their inspection. Um, Which hasn't been done yet? Correct. I see. So you, oh, I'm so sorry. And what I'm saying is so important. I should have done that. Thank you. Um, so that's one of several boxes that has not been checked yet. So, right. Um, once this project gets through all these different boards, um, the health department reviews the plans, has to make sure that what is being proposed, it is in fact a garage. It is, in fact, storage on the backside, mm -hmm. and nothing constitutes a bedroom, so it's not an increase in the septic flow, mm -hmm. um, and that gets passed on. So I guess that, Steve, was why I was having the same concern. I think you were about saying, if, if we approve it, um, it's understood that it's uh, subject to Title five. Well, yeah, I mean, Board, Board of Health, Health maintains their own the ZBA, jurisdiction for Title V. It doesn't go away because we approve it or right. unaffected by our decision. Good. Okay. Just checking. Sure. Any other questions? Um, I have a question, but it kind of comes in the form of a comment to commissioners. Um, I'm a little puzzled why this is coming in as, the, as an RDA and not an NOI. I mean, I'm looking at a garage that is proposed to be 16 by 30. It's certainly not going to build that on the asphalt driveway that's there. There's going to be excavation. There's going to be footers. They're taking out all of the timber steps and retaining walls. I see no siltation barriers anywhere. We're inside the 100-foot buffer zone. Why is this an RDA and not an NOI? I'm inclined to say 
I'll accept a motion for a positive determination because there's a lot of work that I see that's going to need some proper conditioning. Um, Just to be on the safe side. I'm not done. Mr. Chairman, it's I a, agree. It's a comment to commissioners. Um, I know if the owner is a landscaper, that's great. Uh, trees come down, the neighbors all of a sudden look and say, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> There is a tree further down that I know that's got to come down because it's on like a 30 degree angle and the root structure's out of the ground and it's 24 feet tall. And it's really affording most of the privacy to the house that's the side of it. The more I looked around there yesterday, the more I questioned, why is this an RDA? I, I don't get it. I've seen, I've seen NOIs come before us with less work. So it's more of a comment to the commissioners than a question to the applicant or their representative. I am also curious as to why isn't there any mitigation? And I think the mitigation would go through an NOI. It would be conditioned in. But I mean, 33 feet of this is within 50, the 50-foot 50 buffer, right? So right. it is within the 50-foot buffer to the Mashpee Inland Bank. And I do want to clarify, there is a little bit of work on the plan shown, um, siltation with um, straw wattles. Um, the mitigation, because the entire structure is within already developed areas, the mitigation doesn't calculate. You're removing development and forcing development. But we're not removing footprint. You're, you're not removing footprint and you're proposing footprint. You're removing footprint if development of paved driveways, concrete patios, and the retaining walls are replacing with structure. So it's development for development. Okay, and what about the shed? Is the shed just existing and we're folding this in so that it becomes above board? That, yeah, that shed exists. That, that's nothing to do yeah. with this project. That's outside of the of work. I see. I have nothing further. Isn't there, I, I, mitigation is triggered for this. Am I wrong? No. We, I mean, so we're you, at, are we just at a differing of opinions? If you calculate mitigation, what you calculate is what's existing in the different strips of the mitigation strips, five feet each, each strip, how much exists of development that's being removed and how much of development is being put in. So the same area that's being covered by this, it's already developed, so everything gets washed out. Well, you just traded hardscape for structure. Hardscapes, but right. So in the, in the eyes of the mitigation calculation, the hardscapes and the development is the same as the structure. And those hardscapes were previously permitted or they just showed up? Um, that workout level was permitted just like that. Um, and the driveway and everything else that's currently a hardscape was permitted within um, the 50 foot to the buffer, the bank. It's been there, yes. Yeah, it's previously legally altered area. But yeah. I will just, if, you, if it's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yes. Just to offer some clarification, Raul, Section D, this is part of Regulation 12, Mitigation under Chapter 172. The exact wording is where the provisions of Chapter 172, Section 3, involve alterations within previously altered areas within 100 feet of the closest resource area. The following table provides guidance for mitigation. So it's not a wash. You are redeveloping previously developed areas, so it does trigger mitigation. That's the way it wor the wording is. It's not. So I guess my, my question would be, how does it get added? How does it get calculated? Because it wouldn't be the calculation, because the calculation would end up being a wash. So you're, um, just to clarify, you're taking credit for what's there, and when the calculations are done, they're erased because of the driveway already being there? Right. I don't think that's how this chart works. Not according to that wording. It says within previously altered areas, so it acknowledges that areas are previously altered. And you are redeveloping them. Whether it's grass, landscaping, existing driveway, that's how the wording works. It's not, it's not how you're describing it. This is pretty clear language in the mitigation regulation within previously altered areas. A driveway is a previously altered area. So, Drew, 
uh, for the record, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineering. Um, we have always, uh, when we've done these mitigation calculations, and you and I have had some discussions about this over the many years, uh, we have always looked at what's a structure in the eyes of conservation. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily a structure for the building code or anything like that, but structure for conservation. That would be your hardscape, your patios, your driveways. And if you think about it logically, what you're trading for is basically impervious area for impervious area. It's not vegetated area. So we're look, we've always done this, and you've approved hundreds of projects this way, where you look at what's on the ground today, legally existing, legally existing previously developed buffer zone. And if that is structure as far as conservation is concerned, then we're not going to count uh, that as required to have mitigation. For example, if you had lawn area, and then we're proposed a patio in that lawn area, that patio would need to be mitigated for. But if there was patio and we were replacing patio with a shed, the shed would not need to be mitigated for because it's replacing the patio, which is the hardscape, which is that structure as far as conservation is concerned. And we've ran into this through a couple of different scenarios. Uh, one I can remember offhand on Somerset where we had a patio close to the water. Um, and they wanted to make some improvements to that, so they did, but it wasn't necessary to mitigate for because it was the existing structure. If you're going for a variance in, or a, a waiver, more importantly, or this mitigation trigger, uh, this mitigation calculation gets triggered, you do have to do those calculations, but we have long held the standard of structure, conservation eyes of structure, impervious, impervious, are even trades for each other. Right, if, if I could also add to that, it's like it redevelopment of a developed area. So if, if the existing dwelling is getting torn down and redeveloped, the existing footprint is a redevelopment area. You put a new I understand. there. I do understand where you're coming from, but this, the wording, let me just go on to read exactly what it says on the regulation. Within previously altered areas means areas already devoid of natural vegetation, such as lawns, parking areas, pavement, etc. It even spe specifies parking areas. So you're proposing a garage over a parking area that is classified in this regulation as previously altered area. That's so it triggers mitigation. That, that's defining the previously altered area. Right, but it's under the calculation chart. So it's pretty clear to me that this is a previously altered area. You're putting a garage over. I get it. I understand. You're replacing hardscape with a structure. So from, a, from an impact standpoint, maybe it's not going to have any impact to the resource areas. But based on the waiver clause, because it is within 50 feet, it's pretty clear that it classifies previously altered areas as some forms of hardscaping. Well, this would be it's ultimately up to the commission to decide whether or not they're going to require mitigation. I'm just trying to clarify the language under the mitigation section. Um, the other quick question that I have is on the plan, because I, I do want to get this clarified before the commission continues with the operation. You've got two areas on the plan identified as top of Inland Bank under Mashby's regulation. You've got um, the section down closer to the pond. And then you've got that brown dashed line, and both of them indicate Mash B and Lynn Bank. So I just wanted to get some clarification there. As yeah, far as what that. so you and I actually had talked about this, and this is when I posed the question of is a wall a bank? Right, okay. So we have the wall, the first one. It yeah. exceeds, if we count that wall as bank, yeah. it exceeds the slope criteria. So then you have top of slope, but then it flattens out. So there's no so bank. Is it more than an eight foot break in slope there? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, would, it would discontinue the bank above it, then you would defer to that lower inland bank. You wouldn't, you wouldn't count both. If there's a break in slope, you go with uh, where the slope manifests closest to the resource area. So meaning that the so second, the that second this, coastal bank is not a match coastal bank, it's just the lower bank. Are, I, I, I like that. Well, this, is, this is the break and slope right here, right? Yes. the lawn area. So this would be the top of Inland Bank here. Yes. Here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then we're, to, we're, we're going to want to submit a revised plan because 
you and I were on the phone and we were talking about that and that. Okay. I, I don't think I thought about breaking slope during that yeah. conversation. So yeah. that's just to clarify, that would be the top of Inland Bank. Okay. So we're going to submit a revised plan then uh, for that. But it'll jog from the neighboring property anyway. It would still be within the 50, wouldn't it, from the neighboring property? So no, it will be 60 feet from that Inland Bank going straight to the water, but the inland bank is going to continue on the neighboring property, wouldn't it? It's going like this, and then on that property, it's like this. So are you, you referring were... to the brown dashed line? So that's the brown one that's being discontinued that's, because there's that's a being break. discontinued. That was my point of clarification. So the right here, this brown line, yep. that's not top of inland bank. This is down here because you have a more than an eight foot break in slope that discontinu that discounts any bank. Right, so but what about, about on the neighboring properties? Is it within 50 <coughs> feet of the bank from the sides? I, I think we, the neighboring properties are set up on a terrace like that. I believe the neighboring properties just slope straight oh, okay. down. Okay. I didn't look that much at the neighboring properties when I was there, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know in the absence of a revised plan where that setback is. We'll prepare a revised plan and submit that, and we'll continue this hearing. Um, it's most likely. Um, going to remove the addition from the 50 foot buffer. So we just want to be sure about that. So we're going to take a look. Have as few mitigation plans as possible. So I have a quick question, if I may. Yes. Um, the grass looks to be not in accordance with Regulation 31 for the lawns loading, loading standards. Um, and that is a grave concern of mine because there is pretty much no native vegetation on any of those banks going down to the water. So for me, that's a direct seepage into the pond. That's two sections of grass that are clearly being fertilized, not in accordance with Regulation 31. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed as well with the applicant going forward, especially since he's a landscaper and he should know the laws. So. So that should be part of his revised plan? That should be looked into by the commission. As Paul said, he has concerns about a negative determination for this case. Right. I know the commission has said in the past they do not want to condition RDAs. Right. So if that would be the case, since he's fertilizing the lawn, not in accordance, that might be an option as well for the commission to decide. Okay, this is how you should use your audio. This is how you should call. Hi. I don't know. Excuse me. This is Hello, can you uh, mute, please? We can hear you. Please mute your phone. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, so this goes back to your question. Is this an idea or an NOI? Right. Well, it, it kind of reinforces my concern as to why this even came in as an RDA. There's a lot going on here. And mm. yeah, if, you, if you're requesting a continuance to revise this plan and come back with still a lot of the concerns that we have, we may just look at it and I can't say how they're going to vote, but I know how I'm going to vote. I just don't see this as an RDA. Well, just with the mitigation situation that Drew is matching, I'm, I'm looking right at it. That's what it says. Well, if we the revise it and it's outside the 50, there won't be any mitigation. So then that concern is eliminated. And we typically would do RDAs um, when there wasn't mitigation required. It's up to you. Right. The reason we filed the RDA, the, the applicant did meet with staff, uh, and that's what was recommended. So that's what was filed. That's, that's what we always try to do. We always try to work with staff ahead of time to get the appropriate sure. um, project before you. So where does that leave you, Mr. Chairman, uh, in terms of uh, either a continuance subject to uh, a revision or just a revision in their application? You can. Um, I'll accept the motion for a continuance at the request of the applicant, and we'll see what we get for a revised plan. And hopefully, looking at the revised plan, we won't have the type of concerns that we have right now. I mean, the way I'm looking at this right now, this is an NOI. Mm -hmm. um, before you, the board takes a vote, if I could get like those pointers of why not an RDA so that we can reach out to the applicant and inform him. It looks like because of these reasons, this could be a positive determination. Right. Um, well, as I mentioned before, um, 
in your presentation, you said that they were going to try and work with these trees, but if they have to go, they have to go. So I'm assuming that they go, and if they're affiliated with a landscape company, it's probably not a big deal for them, but it might be a big deal for the neighbors. And then I don't see anything in terms of the excavation for the garage itself. I know this overhang is going to have things stored underneath it. I just see a lot going on here that I feel as though I need a lot more information. I would not be comfortable to say negative determination. We'll just you know keep an eye on it. But, but what are your concerns? Because I, you stated one about the trees, but what about excavation? How is that garage going to be constructed? What so, so the plan wouldn't change RDA or NOI for the excavation of this garage, for the installation of this garage. It is, it is a foundation excavation. It, that's, either way, it's going to be the same excavation. Um, the limit of work that we show on the plan will still be that same limit of work. Um, so in terms of those two cases, the drywall will still be the drywall. On um, those three cases, that, that wouldn't change whichever application gets filed. But what, but what is your concern? We want to address your concerns. So what is your concern? My concern was based on everything that I saw on the site yesterday or the day before when I was out there and looking at the plans that I had that were sent to me from the office. And I thought, there's mitigation that's got to be called for here. I don't see any siltation barriers set up. I have no information at all about how deep this foundation is going down for this garage. The uh, tiered, uh, they're all rotted timbers, that tiered patio with the Blessed Virgin statue is, that's all coming out. And I'm just thinking, this is a lot of work and the water is right there. We had an applicant in here earlier tonight with, a, I would call it, catastrophic failure of sediment going into the buffer zone. And I could see the same thing happening here. And so on an RDA, we're just going to say, yeah, this is negative. Go ahead. I, yeah, but I the, there are limit of works shown on the just so you, you noticed that. I did. And you can draw a line on a paper. You get a good-sized rainstorm. If we did get a three-inch rainstorm in the middle of this kind of construction, John's pond would be brown. So if one of the concerns is to I, I, change I, the, the limit of work to hay bales or straw bales, they're stronger, sturdier. We can call that specifically on the plan. I mean, you have but two he's asking me what my concerns were. That's not on the plan. I come in here tonight with what I have. And that's why I said to the commissioners, to me, this should be an NOI, not an RDA. I don't see the kind of information that I would need for me to vote yes on a negative determination. It's not there. Okay. And we're just trying to get to the points. We, we typically don't show depths of foundations. They're usually always standard, uh, depths of eight feet. Uh, we do show uh, erosion control, which is standard, and that's what we would do. Uh, there is a question about mitigation, and we're going to address that. So is there any other concerns that you have? Where will the trees be placed when they're replaced? If they were replaced, it would be the same spot. But it, just so we were... Yeah. Dotting the I's and crossing the T's, are there any other concerns? So you're going to plant trees within 10 feet of the foundation and hope that they don't grow tall enough to then land on the foundation or land on the building if a storm hits? We have trees come in front of us all the time where it's, it's too close to the foundation, we have to take it down because it's a, insurance won't cover it. So how are you going to replace it within nine feet of the foundation? We'll review with the homeowner who yeah. Planted them, them himself yep. to figure out specific location to be preferably further away from the foundation. Yep. Do, do you have a distance? Is there a regulatory distance for planting trees from the foundation? Is there a distance that you would like to see? I mean, we have a existing structure right now where the trees are, what, 15 feet away or so? Yeah, and typically when they're within 10 feet, people come in front of us and ask for permission to remove them, and we allow it because insurance and because with storm activity, it would land on the roof. So if you're planting it within that area, then it's a, a question to the staff in five years, hey, can we just remove these because they're going to land on the roof? 
it doesn't make sense for them to be within 10 feet of the foundation. I, I heard what you're saying. Yes. I'm just trying to address your concerns. Yeah. So is there like a magical number or some number that you think is appropriate? I think not within 10 feet of the foundation. So 10 yeah. plus. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Further than 10 feet away. Further just given the expected growth pattern of whatever species of tree, just use that as your guideline. Yeah, so we can make that from, as a general yeah. rule yeah. going forward. Yeah. Sure. So that one quick question is, what's the hesitation about withdrawing this RDA and, and filing an NOI? It's a significant cost to the client, and I don't know if that's necessary at this point. Okay. Well, that's... Yeah, and then that's a risk if you guys get a positive determination. Yeah, I think it's appropriate for us, for us to determine if the structure is within the 50 feet and if there's mitigation uh, triggered. Um, so I think that's an appropriate first step before we go spending the client's money. I'm just curious why we, where's the major increase in the cost in terms of preparation? Uh, there's, a, there's a bit more work that has to go into a notice of intent versus an RDA. I, but not, a but lot not that much work. that it would impact it. I, I'm, I'm asking a question you're not required to answer. I'm just, I'm trying to see. Is that the only of, objection you have? It can equate to thousands of dollars difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's meaningful. Oh, every dollar is meaningful. I just wanted to hear some of the parameters of what you considered to be an impediment to just going ahead and changing it. As well, we, we also have to talk to our client. Of course. Yep. When are we continuing? Okay, this? so we're looking then at a request for a continuance. Okay. So this would be for July 27th at 6.18 p.m. Hold on one second. Is it 26th or 27th? 27th. 27th. Yeah. Just to let you know, I won't be there at the July 27th here. I don't think and you will. I am on vacation the 27th. If we have a quorum, we have Alex. a quorum. Alex can run it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aaron, You're leaving out, you, Alex. You were on that week. You'll be. I am. Right? Yes. Yep. It'll be her debut. I had told Alex ahead oh, of time. Oh, great. So. Yep. Okay. All right. So 7:27 at 6:18 p.m. 6:18. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to continue the hearing for Peter and Patricia Briggs, trustees, 35 James Circle, to July 27th at 6:18 p.m. Thank you, Steve. Second, somebody? A second. Thank you, Alex. Any further discussion? I just have a question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, on that motion, um, I'm assuming that there's no need to have any conditions for what they include in their revised plan when they come back for the continuum. No, I thought we, we don't want to name any bar that they have to reach. No, I think we discussed the issues, and he mentioned what he was going to and do with the buffer zone and, and talked about fine. the mitigation of right. trees. I think we covered it. All right, good. Yep. Anything else? Okay, then. Um, I'll call for a vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Now calling the 609 hearing for Stephen M. and Jill M. Purpura. 134 Shore Drive West. Proposed access stairs and bank stabilization. Representative is Cape and Islands Engineering. And this is an amended order of conditions. We've got a request for a continuance to July 13th at 618. It's already on the continuance list, so it's not adding on to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any questions or was there a particular reason for the oh some violation took place on the property they created two pathways uh, leading to the proposed stairway um, so really can't 
fathom the reason why they felt that was okay, but um, that's the reason. And what about all the cutting? Everything is cut to a, a height of... That's, that is for the original. The original application for the herbicide treatment for the Japanese for, knotweed. Yeah, it's, it's Japanese so, knotweed. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so they'll, okay. they'll so cut that half part at first. That's, that's not part of the problem. problem. No, no. Okay. Yeah. You can see from the photo, that's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I walked on it. Yeah. It's very soft on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the knotweed's literally probably growing under the mulch as we speak. Mm -hmm. That's how re relentlessly aggressive it is. So. Yeah. so this all has to be removed, right? Or, well, one of the pathways, I mean, my, in my opinion, I don't want to deliberate too much because it's proposed to be continued, but one pathway needs to be mitigated for, but considering that they're proposing a pathway to access the stairs, I don't think it makes sense to close it in and only to have it opened up again right. uh, when it comes time. So one of the pathways has to be closed up and the other one would remain. Uh, that's All right then. Um, would entertain a motion. Okay, Mr. Chairman, make a motion. For Stephen M. and Jill M. Papora, 134 Shore Drive West, continue to July 13th at 6.18 p.m. Thank you, Steve. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Alex? Yes. yes. Steve? Marjorie? Yes. Stanley? Yes. I vote yes as well. So that will be continued. Now calling the 612 hearing for the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe, Natural Resources, Water Body of Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Pompanesset Bay. This is a proposed aquaculture farm. The representative is the owner of record, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This is a notice of intent. Well, the representative is actually the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe. Oh, I'm tribe. sorry, representative itself. <laughs> the yeah. owner of record is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I just gave you the whole bag. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. So good evening. I'm, uh, I'm Jason Steiding. I'm the uh, Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe's Natural Resources Director, and um, we sort of manage this, this aquaculture site. We have uh, 12 acres total in Papanessa Bay. We submitted a notice of intent recently for the eight acre parcel, which you're looking at on that map. Jason, do you just want to give a basic overview of how aquaculture works for the commission's edification, just for their knowledge? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very straightforward that uh, on, on this particular site here, we're propagating uh, oyster and quahog seed. Um, they're in bottom cages. Uh, there's no floating gear in this in this area. Um, the the site is worked and maintained regularly. The the, the cages are worked, pulled, uh, fish are moved, uh, and worked. The uh, the site is uh, that is state property. So there are no abutters. There's no abutters or anything like that. Uh, there's no concern in that regard. It is a no wake zone, so there are no navigational issues. Um, the buoys are uh, secured to the ground with 100-pound weights, so there are no issues there. Um, the application was submitted recently through the town's conservation department with, with the Drew's assistance. Uh, the town and the state are both in receipt of the application and have no concerns uh, with the application. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we've, we've been on this grant since the 70s. Yep. Great. Um, so help me out here. Um, this is, had been going on and working fairly well since through the 70s and the 80s, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to determine and, and uh, uh, would like your help on is how is this going to be different? I'm living in Poppy Bay, so how is this going to be different than last week? I mean, is, the, is it because of oysters? How is what going to be different? What's going to be different? What, what is this notice of intent for? I, I, I've read it three times and I just can't figure it out. Can you, do you, yeah, can you can I, help I, them to, I can to explain the intent of the application? So, so this area is an established grant area for the tribe. They're not right. seeking permission for that tonight. The, area, the use of the area has been relegated to seeding only. Right. So seeding, juvenile, shellfish, 
no cages, no buoys, no structure whatsoever. This application is for cages and buoys to uh, take it to the next step from seeding to a full-blown aquaculture operation. So seeding is just throwing seed into the water and hoping for the best. Okay. Uh, so this is a more formal version of growing shellfish. So but that's, uh, that's what I'm asking. I guess if, if, I, if I were to go to some of my neighbors, say Poppy Bay, et cetera, et cetera, the, right. the Audubon Society. Sure, yeah. Um, and they'd say, for what? Well, what did you, what did you approve of that for? And if they said, oh, is that so that they can create a new oyster farm so that they can then harvest and sell oysters? If that's what it's for, then I would just like to know. I think we ought to say that. It's a, and I'm a huge friend, advocate, and supporter of the tribe, and, and particularly um, the shellfish and the way in which they have respected not only the habitat but the surroundings as they pursued uh, a, a viable business. Sure. But, but this is an expansion of the seeding. This is really creating the business of cultivating and selling oysters. Quahogs. And what else? Quahogs. And quahogs. Yeah. Well, I don't have that. Just for the record, I love oysters and quahogs. So <laughs> don't be wrong. But, but sh shouldn't we just say that and identify it for what it is? It's a commercial. Yeah, of course. Expansion. Yep, exactly. Well, it's an expansion within an already legally established grant area. So there's no actual expansion of the of the existing grant area, they're just using the space in a different way. That being using cages and establishing demarcation buoys for navigational safety. Right. <clears throat> that's the only difference. And that doesn't set a precedent for Harry Schwartz down the street to go and put his cages. There's a process for all aquaculture proposals in town. A very straightforward, go to the Board of Selectmen, Division of Marine Fisheries, local CONCOM, that's the order of events for anyone who wishes to establish an aquaculture farm anywhere in the waters of the Commonwealth, be it Mashpee or anywhere else. So this. But a, at present time, do you happen to know, or, or do you happen to know, is there a presence of any other aquaculture um, operation there currently are. in so Poppy Bay? Dick Cook has an aquaculture farm in Aqua Bay, and uh, it's Ron Hawk's first name. I Mr. Ron Hawk came before this commission a few years back to establish an aquaculture farm in Great River. Uh, so those are the two other existing okay. aquaculture farms in Mashpee. Mm. Okay. It just to me is a horse of a different color, that's all. Okay. So is there already a notice of intent for the, for the aquaculture farm that's in existence? Is this an it amended? didn't trigger a notice of intent because it's just seeding. Why was it? This isn't for seeding. This is to establish cages. I understand it's to establish caging, right. cages, but why Why weren't they always allowed to do cages? Um, I don't know. Jason, I don't know what the history was, why it started out as seeding. I don't know if there was economic reasons. Or I, I would imagine, and I, I'm, I'm just guessing here because it has been so long, I would have guessed that back in the 70s, it was this grant really started more as a mitigation effort for nitrogen, yeah. Yeah, um, and it wasn't a commercial operation, so yeah. it would have made sense not to really invest in cages, just to, to, to spread seed. Okay. I see. Anything else? I just have one question, and it's just for my own information. I know the Barnstable County... Uh, does a dredging operation here on an annual basis. They didn't get in there this year for a host yeah. of reasons. What is the distance from the proposed farm to where they would be coming through? I'm just thinking in terms of siltation barriers and stuff that might be needed <laughs> because this is now becoming a you know a more important, a bigger operation for you guys. Yeah, I, I actually don't know the distance. Would, would you guys happen to know the distance between that channel and, and our green? I mean, it's it's got to be several hundred feet because the two areas of dredge are here. Just right. this area between the southern tip of Pompanusset Island okay. and the spit, and then here and in then the outer channel, yeah. and then the 1916 channel back here. So it's pretty well separated from the three dredge so locations. Be any kind it shouldn't of be an issue. Yeah. 
and, and like certainly I said, communicate with the county dredge. You know, if you feel that siltation may be an issue when it comes time for dredging, yeah. um, you know, to protect uh, the um, shellfish. So I wasn't sure we could, the, yeah. the areas that they dig out there. Yeah, it's, it, they're each well separated from the grand area. Yeah. Okay, great. No other questions? Um, comments, Drew? That you have? Um, only comment is that. Um, here. That uh, there be some conditions if the commission uh, issues an order of conditions <clears throat> that any conditions that the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries has in regards to this uh, proposal be incorporated into local order conditions. Any gear that becomes stormborne debris, such as the cages or dislodged buoys, must be safely retrieved by the operators of the grant at the earliest possible opportunity. And the last condition has already been addressed that the boundaries will be demarcated with buoys for navigational purposes as per the Harbor Master recommendation. That's standard operating procedure for grants. The boundaries of where this will apply? Correct. This new permission will apply? Yes. Yeah. And do we know what they are? What? In other words, the boundaries as it's so by they're wildlife and fisheries, or do we know them now? It's I know I see, the, I see the drawing, but yeah, I so wonder. Where the red dots are, those okay. are going to be the buoys. Just four, four buoys on the corners. Four That's buoys right. to mark it in the, That's the all four you'll corners. See yeah. And there's already, currently, there's already navigation buoys out there as well, so there'll be right. very So there'll be no other boat so traffic so. getting into this area. Mm -hmm. Okay. One quick. Not very deep there, anyways. Four yeah, you can't take no, it all across. You can't, you can't go across. <laughs> it's not recommended. Yeah. It's not deep at all. <laughs> Unless you got a kayak. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we uh, make a decision, it says pending DEP number. Did we receive a DEP? It does not. Yet? It has not received a DEP number yet. But the commission did vote that you could close an issue in the absence of a number. Uh, we would not issue the order conditions until a number is received. Number. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments from those in attendance? Seeing or hearing none? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a procedural question. Um, uh, I think because I uh, do pro bono advisory uh, for, say, Poppy Bay as a 501c3, I'm going to abstain. I hope that's cool. Sure. Doesn't throw you off your quorum. We still have a quorum. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay, then I would entertain a motion if there is one. Okay, Mr. Chairman, make a motion for uh, Mashby Wampanoag Tribe Natural Resources, Water Body of Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Papanessa Bay, for a close an issue with the following conditions. Um, the conditions are any uh, and all conditions for Mass Division Marine Fisheries should be incorporated into the local order conditions. Any gear that becomes stormborne debris must be safely retrieved at the earliest convenience, and the grant boundaries must be demarcated by buoys for navigational purposes for the Harbor Master's direction. With the issue upon receipt of the DEP number. And with the issue upon receipt of the DEP number. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So we have a motion and a second before us. Any last minute questions, discussion, comments? None? A call for a vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And I vote yes, and Marjorie, you're abstaining. Abstain. Motion carries. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. We're all set. I appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, you too. Thank you. I will now call the 615 hearing for Timothy W. Leadham, trustee, Shoestring Bay nominee, trust 2, 352 Mashby Neck Road. This is a proposed gravel parking area relocation of shed landscaping and mitigation plantings. The representative is the Cape and Islands Engineering Incorporated. We have continued this meeting from April 20th, May 4th, June 15th, and we are now here tonight, June 29th. It's a notice of intent. Well, there has uh, been we have a request. An additional continuance. Dan, do you want to give some? 
Yeah, so there was a request for a continuance to cover some of the housekeeping because uh, they had a ZBA hearing last night and there were some conditions that they need to account for in the narrative as well as the planner record. Um, so they're going to cover that in, the, in updating the narrative and the application. Um, also, there was not an abutters notice because one of the properties was in a different ownership. So that has now changed. Both properties are under the same ownership of the marina, the owner of the marina. And because of that, um, the application basically is for 21 frog pond close as well as 352. Um, so they need to make an abutters notification for 21 frog pond close before, uh, and they wanted to do that because they didn't want to have any issues coming forward if there was a concerns um, with this project from any additional abutters. So I felt that that continuance request was appropriate because that would give more information to the commission and give updated and revised data for everything. Okay. There was also talk last night at the Zoning Board of Appeals about uh, requiring an IA system to be incorporated into the project. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to get information on the, I will look into that. I was, I've not been made aware of that. Yeah, I think it was like condition number four or something. Okay. They had several conditions that they had mentioned. I didn't see the whole meeting on the video, but I saw that part of it. Yeah, they ended up what help 30, requested it. 38 conditions for the ZBA. 38? Yes. Wow. For the ZBA, so. Yeah, there's a lot of questions about not, nothing that would be our purview, you know, lighting yeah. and so forth, but okay. So, Drew, what would we have for a uh, date and time to? This is uh, this will be for July 27th at 6:15 p.m. And that time was requested by the uh, applicants' uh, representation. Representation. They requested for a later date in July, not the next one. 27th. Yeah, 27th. Okay. And what was the time again? 6:15. 6:15. I'll do my best. Okay. So I would entertain a motion for that continuance. I'm going to stay in front of this vote because I previously recused myself from this project. Okay. I make a motion to continue for 352 Mashpee Neck Road to July 27th at 6.15 p.m. Thank you, Alex. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sandy. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, take a vote. Alex? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. The motion carries. And that will continue on the 27th of July, 6.15. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the 6.18 hearing for Schooners Way, LLC, 3 Elliott Road, proposed septic upgrade and landscaping, or excuse me, and hardscaping modifications. Representative is Cape and Islands Engineering. This hearing is continued from May 18th 2023. It is an RDA. Good evening. Good evening. Raul Lizardi from Cape Bananas Engineering, representing the applicant and property owners um, at 3 Elliott Road. This project was continued um, for this septic, proposed septic upgrade. Um, the main reason for the septic upgrade we're proposing, or the properties, um, including uh, adjacent credit um, land, and the commission was feeling like um, a D9 system was more appropriate. We reached out to the homeowner um, after that first hearing. Um, he's agreeing to put a D9 system, so we're proposing a D9 system. We review the project with the health department. We're um, changing the plans. We changed the plans and we submitted the, the revised plans with a D9 system. So we also revised the nitrogen calculations um, without counting. Um, nitrogen credit area in the nitrogen calculations. Um, it, it still meets the being less than 15 parts per million. It is still a reduction um, on the property. Um, so those were the changes we did. Um, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. This is where we had the question on the the land uh, purchase for wow. the nitrogen. and yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, I remember you said yeah, that. Yeah, so I actually talked to the Board of Health agent about this. Um, so with the aggregate land, the aggregate land itself can be, quote, double dipped, but it cannot be double dipped for residential houses and their septic systems. So in this case, this land is open space for the neighborhood over at, I forget the name of that neighborhood. Leatherleaf. 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 Yes. Over at Leatherleaf. Yeah. So that's 
open space for them. And then as part of a credit for nitrogen, this land is being used for 3 Elliott Road only in perpetuity forever. So it can never be used for any other project or any other home for a nitrogen credit. It can only be used for one. So in this case, they will be, they are acceptable in doing this. Um, and part of that nitrogen aggregate credit, the property itself can never have any human-made structure on it in the life of the property. So no chicken coops, no sheds, no you name it. Can't be ever, anything ever there. Just That's that whole large parcel whole, that we looked at on, on the thing. GIS? Yeah. 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 Okay. So the 600,000 square feet are being encumbered for this house? They're not no. just... No, I don't know. Is it the whole parcel or... No, it, it's an easement. There's so a portion. I'm sorry, you're, he's right. It was an easement. It's not the entire parcel. It was a section of the parcel, which was still a decent size. using sections of the parcel for this. For, for nitrogen credits. Nitrogen credits, yes. Credits, yes. But, so they'll break it up into sections, and then each section can only be used for one house. For, is, there, for, is there a plan of all these sections, all these easements? This is under the Board of Health, so however they organize it, I never talk to him about that. I just talk to him about the policy of it. Okay. So... But I would imagine he, he would have it because he did also mention that he wants to see some or more of this in town because he thinks it's a good thing for the town open space, not town open space, but open space in the town, as well as aggregate credits for places that, houses, lots that just can't have it. So, Has the planning department weighed in on this? Because the planning department is who, who created the neighborhood subdivision requiring that open space for those houses to go there. I can answer. He ha yeah, he has. I've talked to the town planner, and he has. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah he's fully aware of this nitrogen aggregate credit and where it's located. And it can be seen as a loophole um, because of that kind of double dipping, if you will. But currently, it's allowed under Title V. Um, so, you know, until that changes, this is acceptable to the Board of Health as. And they have come forward with an IA system on top of it. So, yeah. So, something that I just want to add is that because of that first hearing, the main concern for conservation is this property. Right. The land credited is elsewhere. And it's not so the AI is in this system. Right. There's more for clarification purposes yeah. yes. than just, our just like education on it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially going forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so, but uh, just to clarify, though, it may not uh, violate the tenants, but it still can be a loophole. It's an yeah, unattractive it's, loophole. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that's my opinion, isn't it? it's a loophole. No, no, that's not, yeah, it, there's just so many times, not just on this one, so I'm not picking on this project, but um, that individual commissioners or the commission itself in the aggregate says this is wrong we need to stop this and i'm saying oh well that's really a board of health issue or that's really you know a cba issue or whatever and then this odd strange sort of creation i'm not so sure that it was done for all the right reasons and i'm not so sure that it serves us well to have it apply across the board well if I have my own thoughts on this. It, it does come under the state Title V regulation. Yeah, I know. It applies to the entire state. Right. And that, that might be all well and fine when you're, you know, in central Massachusetts or in western Massachusetts because there are several different aquifers. You come onto the Cape, there isn't. To me, nitrogen aggregate lands on the Cape, all you're really doing is taking nitrogen. Instead of having to come into the front door, you're sticking it in the back door. It's a sole source aquifer. So you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, the regulations are there to allow it. I don't like them. Uh, I guess our hands are tied with it. Uh, other than the fact that a conservation commissioner's sole charge is to be an environmental steward. And if you feel as though the groundwater isn't being protected properly, then you don't have to go along with it. Well, and then there's all... Because you were just saying you were comfortable with it. No, I'm just saying there's always the option of the Mash P Conservation Commission filing to the state through our senator and our representative to amend Title V. Or we could do it with our townwide special permit when we are doing nitrogen, like a, the nitrogen. We can have that loophole closed yes, we could. with our town special permit. Mm -hmm. 
and advocate for I'm them. I'm just saying, I want to say it out loud because it's, yeah. I, I don't know, I'm always of the belief that whatever the homeowners want to accomplish, they could probably accomplish without having to use this particularly con convoluted way around. Because the properties aren't contiguous. I mean, it's just so yes. blatantly difficult to even explain. But um, in this instance, they've done what we asked, right? And uh, everyone seems to be happy with it. And the difference between the last hearing and this hearing, this is this is an increase in flow, right? This is for five. Correct. The last set of plans only had four changes. This has got five. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments from the commissioners? Drew, would you like to? Uh, nothing more to add. Okay. Anyone in the public that has any questions or comments? I don't see any. Okay, then. I do accept a motion if there is one. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, make a motion for Schooners Way LLC, 3 Elliott Road, for a uh, proposed septic upgrade and housekeeping modifications. Uh, recommend a negative determination for the RDA application. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for a negative determination on the RDA. Any questions or comments on that motion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? In recognition of the homeowners' changes, I vote yes. Sandy? Yes. And I vote no. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. If you'd like, I can give a brief explanation on nitrogen aggregation plans, less than three minutes. Um, I would just like for to background. Sure. Okay. So you know, you're 100% right. This is all regulated under Title V. What happened was when Title V came out in uh, 95, uh, they created these nitrogen sensitive areas. These are areas that contribute to potable water supply sources, municipal drinking water wells, that sort of thing. So your zone two areas are your nitrogen sensitive areas. So what they did in Title V is they came out and they did essentially a regulatory taking. They said everybody in these areas, you are now restricted to one bedroom per 10,000 square feet. Uh, and we're going to grandfather whatever you have in the ground legally existing. So for the people that were getting hurt by this on small lots, what they did was they carved out this nitrogen aggregation plan as a way to preserve property rights. And it allows property owners that are in the same nitrogen sensitive areas, you can't arbitrarily just pick these properties from around, they have to contribute in the same watershed to the same um, water supply well. And they said, you property owners are able to exchange property rights between each other. You can do that once that property gets restricted and in perpetuity, it can be then for the benefit of this property over here in your nitrogen loading calculations. That's how it came about. So it's a property rights issue that they were trying to preserve, and that's really what's behind nitrogen aggregation. Let me ask you, because you might have more knowledge than us sitting here with, with regulations in terms of nitrogen aggregate lands. Has any of that been addressed in the new DEP uh, regulations that have just come out? Yes, they, they did not change it. They have left that they in left there. They left that alone. Yes. It's still a property right issue. Where I'm coming from is I look around the town of Mashpee, and so do you. The water is green. The Mashpee River, you can't even navigate anymore. Something's wrong. We cannot keep doing what we're doing. And that's why I voted no. I, my stand on voting no is my charge is to protect the groundwater. I'm not on board. It's as simple as that. I, I, I might not have, you know, chapter this and section that and subletter this, but I do have a charge to protect groundwater. And when I look around and see what's happening, and I know why it's happening, and I see people coming and still proposing the same old, same old, I will consistently vote no. But that's, you, that's all I'm saying. I'm you voted no for a nitrogen reducing system that's going to re 
result in a benefit. And that's exactly what we want people to do, is we want to provide incentive for people to upgrade their septic systems. You're 100% right. We all share a common problem here on Cape Cod, and that's water quality and it's stem from nitrogen. Cape Cod Commission says 65% of the problem is coming from septic systems. 85%. 15% is coming from lawns. You guys right there with just septic systems and lawns have the ability to help encourage people to use DNA systems and to regulate lawns. And when you look at Regulation 30, which this commission just put back into play, and we are now working on Regulation 31, we are doing that. But as I said, I will consistently vote no to protect the groundwater because I have the right to do that. But, but you're not protecting it if you're voting no against IA systems. So just, and, and you gotta, you got to let people put the IA systems in and not take away opportunity for them to put an IA system in. Because yeah. if you go back and look at the last hearing on this project, I was the guy that was asking for the IA system because what was proposed was a standard Title V. So I don't need to be told but the values no of anyway. an IA system. I, I've, been, I've been the person pushing for IA systems for, what, two years now. I've had many engineers sit here and say to me, well, the reason I'm not putting it in is because I don't have to. I don't have Meanwhile, to. The, the waters around here have become totally catastrophic. Well, don't so that's where I'm know coming when from. they come before you. I have nothing further to say. Thank you. I will now call the 621 hearing for Paul J. and Catherine M. Thurston, 25 Menemsha Road. This is a proposed raise and replace existing single family dwelling. The representative is Drohan Tachiko, I hope I pronounced that right, and Morgan PC. Uh, this is a notice of intent, and we do not have, at least as of now, a DEP number. Just the information of uh, what it says. Do we have a DEP? It says pending DEP number. I don't know if we got one or not. Chair Columbo, good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky. I'm an environmental lawyer with Drowen, Tacho, and Morgan. And you're correct. We checked the DEP website and did not see the DEP file number posted. So we understand that you're not going to be able to close this public hearing without that DEP number so obviously we're prepared to continue the hearing but we'd like to present the project with your permission um, sure. because we believe it's fairly straightforward um, but we recognize that we do have a technical requirement that we need to comply with sure well, well good evening again adam brodsky i'm here on behalf of paul and Catherine thurston the property owners and with me this evening and i should note that the thurstons are here behind me and i'm here with brad holmes Brad is a professional wetland scientist with ECR, as well as Mark Flaherty, our professional engineer with Flaherty and Stefani. And we're presenting what we hope is a fairly routine project to demolish and elevate an existing single family dwelling and deck to comply with the FEMA floodplain uh, construction requirements that are incorporated within the Massachusetts building code. The footprints of the existing dwelling and deck are not being expanded. Um, as you can see from the site plan, the existing dwelling and deck are located within the FEMA V zone, elevation 14, and portions of the existing dwelling and the deck are located within, 100, uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland associated with Dean's Pond. Brad and ECR delineated that BVW in early 20. 23. Uh, the property is presently developed with existing lawn. Uh, we're not proposing to alter the existing lawn, uh, but we are providing uh, and proposing uh, 1,200 square feet of mitigation, which I'll address. The original drawing for the uh, project proposed 200 square feet of mitigation, and Mr. Thurston dropped off a revised plan that increased that by an additional 1,000 square feet and Brad can address that in more detail. Uh, we don't think that the project technically requires mitigation, but we're providing mitigation to provide an additional environmental benefit associated with the project. Uh, prior to construction, the site will be secured with a silt fence and silt sock for erosion control, 
and the existing house will be demolished using controlled demolition. Uh, that is uh, essentially work by hand and small machines. Each piece of the house will be removed and immediately placed in a dumpster, and then the dumpster immediately removed from the site once that work is completed. Um, uh, the construction will be uh, similarly staged and planned, and all materials stockpiled within the existing driveway furthest away from the wetland resource area. The dwelling will be reconstructed, as I said, in its existing footprint on concrete piers that are designed by a structural engineer to, again, meet the building code requirements to elevate the structure within the floodplain. Uh, the locations of the piers are shown on sheet one of the architectural plans. Uh, we did receive a copy of a letter from an abutter. There was a question as to where those uh, piers would be located, and so Mr. Thurston did drop off copies of uh, several sheets of the architectural plans to show the locations of those piers. But again, those are designed uh, by a structural engineer and stamped and will be reviewed by the building inspector from, uh, for compliance with the Massachusetts Building Code as well as the town zoning requirements. Uh, uh, because this is within a velocity zone elevation 14, the base flood elevation is 14. And under the state building code, the lowest structural member of the raised house needs to be at least two feet above that. And in fact, we're providing two feet, one and three quarters uh, inches uh, for the design flood elevation. Uh, so the elevation also complies with the state building code. The existing deck will also be raised and reconstructed on sonotubes. Again, the entire purpose of this project is to elevate the structures above the base flood elevation to allow the free movement of floodwaters in the event of a storm. And as you well know, this is exactly what FEMA, uh, the Commonwealth, and the town want to see, uh, the elevation of presently non-conforming structures to raise them above the base flood elevation. Uh, the project will dramatically reduce the risk of flood damage to the dwelling as well as adjacent properties. And as I mentioned, it will bring the uh, uh, bring the dwelling into compliance with these codes, as well as reduce flood insurance premiums. And I presume, and again, I can't speak with personal knowledge, but I assume the town is very sensitive to um, uh, its compliance with its federal flood insurance uh, program requirements, and, and this is entirely consistent with what the, the town would require in order to ensure its good standing within the insurance program. The roof runoff is going to be directed to two underground leaching basins. There's one existing and one proposed new leaching basin, which is uh, closer to the driveway. Uh, and the runoff from the roof, which uh, is considered to be clean under the Massachusetts stormwater policy, um, uh, will be uh, placed in those leaching basins to promote infiltration. While not part of this filing, uh, the Thurstons intend to replace their septic tank with a, a denitrification tank and, in fact, have secured a, build, a Board of Health permit for that. When it comes time to do that work, they will consult with the agent as to what they would require for authorization from the Conservation Commission. I understand that swapping out one tank for another is typically done under administrative approval, but in any event, that's not part of this project when that work needs to be performed. Um, um, there will be consultation uh, with the agent. Uh, there's an existing generator and uh, air conditioning condenser at grade. Those will also be removed, removing, again, additional uh, existing obstructions within the flood plain. The project does require a special permit, and that application has been filed with the Zoning Board of Appeals. So we've satisfied our requirement to apply for all obtainable permits uh, which is required under the State Wetlands Protection Act and regulations. Uh, I, again, I'll just briefly go through the performance standards. Uh, as you know, there are no performance standards presently for land subject to coastal storm flowage, the floodplain under the State Act, but uh, MassDEP uh, routinely requires uh, uh, that, uh, that the projects comply with the Massachusetts State Building Code and the flood resistant construction requirements. Again, uh, we meet all of those requirements. Uh, 
Uh, there's no question that the project will dramatically improve flood control, storm damage prevention, and the prevention of pollution, which are the interests that are protected by land subject coastal storm uh, flowage. Uh, the project also complies with the performance standards under your Mashpee wetlands regulations. We're not proposing any change to the topography or alteration of land, which would present a greater velocity or horizontal extent of storm flowage. Actually, to the contrary, we'll be facilitating the flow of stormwater beneath uh, the elevated structures. And the elevation of the dwelling and the deck will remove existing vertical walls, uh, which you know, would ordinarily divert storm water. The work is uh, in the buffer zone, uh, and but is more than 75 feet away from the bordering vegetated wetland. There is no existing naturally vegetated buffer strip that will be altered here. It's existing lawn. Um, notwithstanding, and Brad can explain, we're proposing 1,200 square feet of mitigation using native species, uh, which will be monitored to prevent uh, invasives uh, encroaching within the mitigation area. So that was a rather lengthy introduction. I'm sorry if I droned on, um, but I'm going to turn this over to Brad if you have anything to add, or Mark if you have anything to add. Otherwise, we're prepared to answer any questions. Thank you. I'll jump in quick. We proposed a, a significant mitigation proposal. As Adam mentioned, we're not triggering any increase in, in structure footprint or uh, new impervious area that would trigger the mitigation requirements under the uh, regulations. However, Proposing uh, 200 square feet of a, a woody um, a mix of woody uh, ground cover and shrub species, and then we're also proposing 1,000 square feet of pollinator habitats or native wildflower uh, meadow. Um, that is existing turf, so that would be turfed off, um, grub out the turf, and then replace with um, native plantings and the seed mix. So we're at a, a significant, significant betterment of removal of lawn and landscaped area that would, you know, has a potential for, to be fertilized. Uh, so we're removing that and um, creating a, a new a vegetated buffer uh, that doesn't ex exist um, to Dean's Pond. So th that's the general scope. Uh, Mark, unless you have something to add, uh, we're happy to answer any yeah, questions. I'm here for to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the problems that I have with everything that's now on the desk. Um, I received as late as this morning, I think it was around 10 o'clock, uh, your information, Brett, from your reply to the Wilson letter, mm -hmm. which had all kinds of questions and issues. And even the Wilson letter was dated July 26th, and we're sitting here on July 29th. Yes, there is just not enough time, adequate time, for this commission to review, study, compare to plans, and to sit at the table in a hearing like this and be educated on what we have in front of us. So for that one reason, I was going to suggest a continuance because I saw these on my, on my phone, <laughs> and there's just no way. And I didn't have the time today to look at this. I had other things. I mean, we're, we're not town hall employees. We're volunteers. We all have our own lives and jobs and things to do. Uh, so my thought is that uh, continuing this thing down the road, hopefully we have our DEP number. Um, we would have enough time to digest what's here. You would have enough time to answer the abutters' questions and concerns. Uh, communicate with each other, iron out whatever difficulties or problems that you see with the plans, uh, and then bring a very solid, concrete proposal back to the commission uh, so that we can then work with it and uh, expedite uh, a decision of one kind or another. In terms of the septic, um, I was at a recent meeting, I believe it was at the select board, where the um, Board of Health agent stated on a raise and replace, when you disconnect from the system, it's a failed system, automatic failure. The minute you disconnect it, you've abandoned the system. So we would have to see a complete diagram, uh, all of the, you know, everything, right down to test pits, because I know there's been previous 
uh, applications that have come before us in terms of uh, swimming pools and plunge pools and so forth. And a lot of the information on groundwater elevations was going with older stuff. I'd like to see new stuff. I'd like to see is the most recent uh, groundwater information, the most recent information for the elevation of Dean's Pond itself. I know that was a big issue. We are in a velocity zone, so it's imperative that we get this right. Uh, so those are my concerns as the chair. I can't speak for other commissioners, but I got to believe, because I know some of them are still working full time. I'm not, but I know they just, there's no way they could have looked at any of this, even maybe back to the Wilson letter, because that didn't come out to the commissioners until the 27th, I believe. Dan, is that when that was sent out, the 27th? Pardon? The Wilson, the Wilson letter. letter. Yeah. Yeah. So, you so, know, we got it within 24 hours, but it's still, I mean, we need five days, a good five days uh, for any kind of information that's going to be part of a hearing so that these people can. No, Chair Clover, we, we understand completely. We just got that letter, and then we scrambled yeah. to provide that information. Right, and his letter to says so, this is just so this we, is we a understand. temporary thing. We, you know, we just, we're trying to catch up here. Yes, sir. And, and we'll, we'll inquire about the failed system. This is a relatively new system. I believe it was upgraded approximately five years ago. Right. And and so it's simply, it's it's a state-of-the-art Title V yeah. compliance system. Um, but we're happy to consult with the Board of Health regarding that issue. Yeah, you might want to get clarification. He specifically said at the meeting, on a raise and replace, when you disconnect from that system, it has been abandoned and it's going to, it's then classified as a failed system. Yes, so sir. where he wants to go with that, I don't well, know. I don't want to speak that. That would surprise because we, we do have actually have a permit that we just received for that work. Right. So I would have well, assumed that, that the Board of Health yeah. agent would have flagged that issue prior to issuing the permit yeah. to replace the tank. Right. I think Mr. Colombo, uh, Mark Flaherty weighing in there. I think a letter of clarification from the Board of Health might be in order at this point. Sure. Just so that's on the table. We, yep. we think we have a permit, and we understand what you're saying right now, but a little clarification goes yeah, a long way. Yeah, we want to get it right. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And, and again, uh, we understand that this matter is being continued, but we'd welcome any additional feedback from any other commissioners so we can get ahead of and anticipate any issues prior to the next hearing. Sure. So well, we'll, Was we'll this ask. project uh, um, applied for, for the, uh, the variance for ZBA? It's yeah. not a variance. It requires yeah. a special, special permit, permit, and the application has been filed. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Do you have a, you don't have a date or a time for that hearing? August 9th. August 9th? Yes. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? When would we continue to? Uh, Good question. B. We're at seven right now for July 27th. If it's acceptable to have this as an eighth hearing for that night, it can be July 27th. But we we are within the applications can still be submitted for that evening, correct? Sorry. Applications can still be submitted for that for another new applications. New applications, can't they? For the July 27th. Yeah, we're not beyond the filing date for that. Oh, no. No, we're not. That's so new ones could come in for that? By tomorrow at noon. Yeah. Oh, it's tomorrow yeah, is the date. The deadline is the day after, so it's okay. unlikely. Okay. I can't guarantee, obviously. And happy 4th of July. Was, I thought oh, I'm sorry, it was that's for the 13th. For the 13th, not the 27th. Right. So the 14th would be the deadline. Yeah. So we have two more weeks where applications can come in for the 27th. Correct. So it... I mean, and we would so have to hear those ones. Chair, Chair Colombo, if we, if we have any say in this, we would prefer the 27th, I believe. Right. I, so that would mean any new applications would get bumped out to August 10th? That they can't because they have to be heard. Don't they have to be heard within 21 days? As, as long as they sign a waiver. a waiver that they can sign. Yep. Yep. Okay. So but looking at I know on the 27th, both Steve is away and I'm away. Yep. So okay. you'd be chairing a meeting with yep. hopefully a quorum, but... 27th is like the worst night for me. I mean, I'm just not going to be here. Yeah, I'm not here. Chair Columbia, do you have a meeting on the 13th of July? We do, but it's booked. It's the agenda is full. Yeah, full to the third level. And I don't know what.
what's the next one beyond that? August 10th. August 10th. And August 9th, it's in front of the CBA. Right. So that wouldn't be bad, actually. If it is August 10th, the hearing time would be 6 p.m. It's July 27th. I, I'm on vacation that week, so. <laughs> <laughs> Summer's off. Well, let's have it that week. <laughs> That'd be perfect, right? I haven't missed a meeting in a year and a half. This can't be here. Well, um, why can't you put it to back to August? Does that get us out of the timeline for? Uh, no, it can go if it if. Oh, there, oh, if oh you were serious. Representative isn't that? there. Yes, no, no. I, I am literally on vacation Are that weekend. But vacation? again, we were focused on the twenty seventh, and I know that you did have some some conflicts. Right. Do you anticipate a quorum on the twenty seventh? We should. If there's two commissioners that are not going to be here, we would still have a quorum. So if you can squeeze us on, I, I, again, unless I'm mistaken, I'm not certain that there's a great deal to talk about based upon the hearing this evening, but understand that you haven't re reviewed the updated information. Right. That's it. It doesn't matter to me. I just, I know I won't be here. I just wanted to make that known to everybody. Yeah, I won't be here either. So. You won't be here either? No. So Alex. That's fine. We can do this on the 27th, yeah? 27th. Okay. So the time is a moment. Hold on, sorry. As long as um, if you and she were both up, that doesn't sound right for us. Go to the audience. It's, it's, it's still based oh, on right? it's based on a quorum of availability. It's not but the, that's a, it, if one more person drops out, we don't have a quorum. Correct. Right. <laughs> so right now we have confirmed quorum Hi. as it currently stands. And I did not go to the uh, public for any questions or comments, right. so I'd like to at least. But we will have to get a waiver signed yes, for correct. other ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Standard that's, 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 yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. sure. And isn't there, did you say the 13th or the 14th? 13th is the next. The 13th. Uh, isn't there a town meeting or a presentation on the water plan or the project plan or something that night too no no it's a thursday hey. that would be at the select board meeting that would be a monday night yeah 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 okay um i did not go to the audience for any questions or comments and i i know um wilson you're here i didn't know if you wanted to something brief because i know commissioners haven't even looked at your letter as well um Good evening. I, I know that you've all got my letter and most of the information um, has been promised to be updated on the plans. Uh, I am concerned as well about the, the information that was on the previous plan that is not on this plan, like the patio around the, the spa and the then existing vegetation, uh, woody vegetation in particular, which I hope is still on the site, although somehow has disappeared from the plan. Um, the, we've also discovered that um, there appears to be no permit for either the concrete patio or the elevated wooden deck that are on the property. Um, those probably need to be taken into consideration. I believe they've existed for a long time, um, maybe since shortly after the current owner bought the property. But in the aerial photos from 2014, they aren't there. Right. So um, that may be something that the commission wants to consider and the applicant wants to consider in terms of additional mitigation um, because it's all within 100 feet of the pond. Uh, Let me ask pond you, um, you and um, Brad, you have contact information for each other, correct? Yeah. So as you have whatever issues you have, I would like you to be in communication with either him or Mr. Thurston's representative. and kind of get these things laid out so that we don't have to have another continuance to find out this or another continuance to find out that. Um, 
and that way we can expedite everything because obviously we can't go any further tonight. We have a lot of our own homework to do and they have some things to do as well. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate all of that. Um, I look forward to also reviewing the new plans that the board only got very recently as well because okay. we haven't had those yet. So. And will you submit those directly to her or yeah, do we do. submit them yeah. to her? Who's going to submit? We're happy to send information directly to Ms. Wilson. Great. Again, our, our, our principal object was to get it to you first, uh, but we'll, we'll make sure that gets done. Sure. Thank you. And, okay, great. And again, I'm sorry. If, thank you. Thank you. We, we can make the 27th, July 27th work if that's acceptable to the commission. Well, we'll see if it gets voted on. I just wanted to you know, make sure everybody knew what was. Yes, sir. Is there anybody, any other comments from anybody online? Or, um, does anybody online have any comments? for 25 Menemsha. I do not, I'm not sure if Dale does. I do not at this time. Okay. We can see what the revised information is. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. All right, then we've covered all questions and comments, I would entertain a motion for the continuance of uh, the hearing to July 27th. And what would be the time? 6.21 p.m. 6.21. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for Paul J. and Catherine M. Thurston, 25 Menantia Road. Proposed raise and replace uh, to continue to July 27th at, you said it's 6.21 6.21 p.m. Yep. yep. I'll second. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Alex. Motion made and seconded. Any last questions or concerns from commissioners? Discussion? No. Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good evening. I say we'll see you on the 27th, but I won't. <laughs> Enjoy your travels. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I am not here on the 30th. All these back for your files. Oh, oh, shall I send these around? Uh, we have multiple copies, so if you want to. Pardon? 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 All right. Um, all right. And I'm going to now call the 624 request for an extension. This is Mark Pareski, trustee, and Laura Pareski Gould, trustee of 18 Grand Vista. It's a request to extend the order of conditions 43 3072. Representative is Baxter Nye, engineering. There's no hearing for this. It's just an extension it's request. Just an extension yep. request. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We'll and there were no the there were no issues with the extension request. We we asked for an explanation. Yeah. It's acceptable. Yeah. But so how, what's the length of the extension? One year. They can go from one to three years. It's their okay. choice. Do we have to on the motion? Do we have to say what? Just what the signing of the permit. Okay. When it, when we get when we pass them around. Yeah. Okay. And did I, I read something about they are questioning the design of the building? They want to bring it in more in line with yeah, neighboring buildings. Correct. That they they bought yeah. this lot or something. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the property itself got stamped plans by the original contractor of the property. When they sold it, the homeowner wants to change the layout um, of the property, you know, itself. Um, right. So, yeah, I think it's definitely prudent that they get the extension based off the fact that this gives an opportunity to reorganize the area and that's already an area that's fairly highly impacted so yep. another opportunity to get a project seen before you I think is a right. good idea so no work has been started on it nope it is completely not even a tree cut it's yeah. right it's still all a lot easier to correct it on paper than it is on the ground <laughs> yeah perfect okay mr. chairman make a motion for uh, um, extend the um, existing um, order condition 43 3072 for Mike Pareski trustee Laura Pareski, Gould, Trustee, 18 Grand Vista. I'll second. 
Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Alex. Motion made and seconded to grant the extension that has been requested. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I will take a roll call vote. Alex? Yes. Steve? Yes. Marjorie? Yes. Sandy? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Motion carries. Okay, that backs us up to our pre and post hearing agenda items. We finished with the meetings. We're on discussion of Mashpee water quality uh, issues and initiatives. This is an ongoing discussion item that we've placed on our agenda. I know it's also on planning boards, select boards, and I think that's it. Anything that you would like to bring up? Uh, I could just say that there is local groups in town in Wakepeak, Mashpee, Pond. Um, I went to a meeting with them Sunday and gave a presentation. Uh, mainly about what permits to apply for for a certain projects and things you want to do in your property as well as updated them on regulations within town, fertilizer regulation, regulation 30, things of that nature. Um, and they basically told me that they are starting a, they didn't want to say movement, but when I did they hopped on it. Um, they're starting a movement to have a full fertilizer ban here in Mashpee. Mm. Um, so yeah, so we'll see where that goes and see if they're successful and see what they have drafted up in the future um, for that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty promising and we will see where it goes. Yep. You know, given uh, what Mashpee Wakeby has looked like over the last two weeks, I can understand why there's a movement. I mean, it's just, it's totally unacceptable. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I've sent pictures to friends I know and one person looked at the dock and they said, I thought that was sitting on someone's lawn. Yeah. It's sad. Here it doesn't green. It's, so yeah. it's just, it's a mess. <laughs> at least uh, Schuster Bay cleared out. And to go by Schuster Bay now. Really? Oh, but, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I but don't the, know whether it's at the time of year when, the, you know, the water temperature, or the air temperature, the sunlight, everything, you know, and then it explodes. And then, yeah. and then when things get past that threshold, then it just disappears. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, it settles to the bottom of this muck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It creates a whole new problem. It sinks. It's good on top. Yeah. yeah. Wait, is that true? Yeah. Yes. They had, uh, so this <laughs> meeting had, uh, layer was. Pretty much established. Alex, yeah, I process. get educated here, but not in a good way. So, so this meeting also had a uh, one of the lead scientists from UMass Dartmouth, who is spearheading some projects and remediation, possible remediation of Wake P. Mashpee, to see if they can replicate it throughout Cape Cod and the state. So, they're doing promising. good work there. Yeah, keeping busy. Um, I'm going to jump around a tiny bit. Um, I know we haven't met since our last meeting on the. Uh, Bylaw Subcommittee, Bylaw Review Subcommittee. And yes. We are presently working on 25, and I know 31 is next, so Correct. we want to keep a close eye on this movement for banning fertilizer and think about some type of language that we might incorporate into our bylaw. Yeah, um, and any, anything you look into, I recommend looking at Chapter 107 of the town. Um, that's a town bylaw that um, is nitrogen loading, um, and in that bylaw, there's some language you could possible use or whatnot. Um, and one of the performance standards is that it's, uh, you cannot fertilize any pure phosphorus fertilizer on any resource area in town. Right. That's already a dictation, but I don't see many people doing that for their green lawns, so. I know doing an all out ban is a tough thing because the state preempts what towns want to do. I don't know if that would apply to our jurisdictional uh, issues with resource areas, we might be able to do a ban. Yes. And, and, get, it's you know, entirely, and get that approved. Entirely possible. I mean, it's home rule. Uh, but my only, it's not so much a concern, it's just kind of a fact of reality is that enforcement is going to be tough. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Given staff levels and just trying to catch people fertilizing at random times during the season is going to be very tough to do. And I'm not saying that to downplay this, it's just the reality of it. Right. Right. You know, the biggest issue that we're facing is education. We, we have education. to get people really to understand good. that you can't create an environment that's not natural to Cape Cod. And fertilized lawns is not natural to this area no. of the state. Uh, so th there's been a lot of talk, too, with the pond groups about that. We've been promoting clover lawns quite a bit because they well, do come fix to my house. nitrogen. 
so as you're well aware. <laughs> um, so we've been doing that at every possible opportunity when it comes to you know on sites, even if it's not we're not there for lawns. In particular, just keeping that consistently in mind and making recommendations to homeowners to make that conversion. If people want to see it, they can come to 35 Meadowbrook, and those <laughs> white heads are everywhere. <laughs> can can we or the town, when a new house goes up, can we? ban a regular lawn and request that it has to be you know clover or something we, we would have to we would have to change the change regulation, regulation yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. but it's something you yeah. could work on to you know to change the regulatory language right um but i think that uh you know clover lawns have really been proven to be really uh, right. very effective not only just in terms of aesthetics but their ability to fix nitrogen is really even better than your local right. lawn variety, so. But the rabbits love them too. They do. But the bees do they too. They can't keep so Yeah, the bees, that's, that's, they are a huge You gotta watch who you're walking in your bare feet. <laughs> it is an early season pollinator food source for a lot of bees throughout the whole, the whole world. So yeah, it's definitely a. Yeah. But we should, consideration. Um, we should organize ourselves to see if we can get back to uh, yes. meetings on the, on the, 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 the dust is settling. I want it. As soon as that dust settles, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get going on that. Um, Dan, is there something you wanted to talk about for Earth Day 2024? Or yes, so. Not Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Oh. Someone oh. Did you want to comment? Can we open it up for public comment? Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Why not? Come on down. I think it's going to be important that she wouldn't ask. Stop shutting the lights off. Yeah. Live Barbie Surf Drive. Um, I was at the Mashby Wakeby meeting, and it was a very wonderful presentation. It was very helpful. I really appreciate it. So noted. And um, there is a the senior center is having a gathering on the 21st of July at one o'clock about environmental toxins. And I think, you know, fertilizer should be on that list. Now, I don't know who's doing this, but if, not, if it's not going to be included, you know, on whoever's doing that, maybe you, one of you could come to do a special event at the Senior Center. You've got a very, you know, broad audience there and um, talk about fertilizer. What was the date on that again? That, that's... I just signed up for it. It's the, the Friday, the 21st of July at 1 o'clock from 1 to 2.30, a talk that you have to sign up for. It's free, but I mean, on environmental toxins. So I don't know what the details are. I haven't but. seen that anywhere advertised. Have you? No. When, when did that, when was that announced? This is the July calendar. Oh, so it's they just, they've, ju <laughs> they've just put this. I mean, I just saw it on an email like yesterday hmm. or Tuesday. And when I went in for my class yesterday, I signed up for it. So it's on, just on the July calendar. That's a Friday, you said? Environmental toxins. And I don't know exactly the details. But that's always a good place to try to do a, you know, an event and inform people. Yes. Get some information up there, sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Uh, I'm, okay. And I'm going to be on that subcommittee with, for fertilizer because I live in a neighborhood where people aren't paying attention, I fear. Yeah. Not yet that they're doing it, but yeah, you're going to be on the subcommittee. Well, some people are. I know some, some, some people's parents are, but not everybody. <laughs> Okay, on the, um, the updates on these pre and post hearing agenda items, if there's any particular question that's pressing on what we have with the uh, comments from Drew, uh, if we could just focus on those, uh, because Drew's gonna get going, and I know Alex will start giving me the look for time. And so I don't know if there's anything there. I just think we should, um, just quickly scanning through these, if we could, Maybe plan the last week of July, first week of August to meet about the final subreview. Last week, July, first week, August. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then Excluding I think. Including the 27th, don't shoot okay. for Okay. And then, um, yeah, I would say land acquisition subcommittee beginning of August. Okay. All right. Anything else on those? I do just want to make. Uh, 
couple of comments, just some updates regarding several of these items uh, for the restoration projects. Um, we, we, I had a really great meeting, Ashley, myself, uh, Dan, met with uh, April Wolves uh, from the Association for the Preservation of Cape Cod, and they would like to assist the town conservation department in taking advantage of some significant funding coming out from NOAA for restoration centering on uh, fish passage. And so we've got the Upper Quashnet uh, and uh, the Mashpee, Upper Mashpee River as two projects that uh, can potentially receive some uh, funding assistance from NOAA and APCC could help us with the paperwork and the applications, which is wonderful. Um, and um, so that, that has, and possibly uh, Redbrook as well, the culvert. Um, so good news there, and I'm very, we're really encouraged by the assistance that they can provide because we certainly need it. Um, and I didn't have any updates for the Harbor Management Committee. The, the meeting was this past Tuesday, and I couldn't attend, so I'm sorry. I, I will update uh, next time around. They are going to have a booth. Uh, you were there. <laughs> They're going to have a booth set up at the Mashpee Power, the Wampanoag Power. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, which is great. But so, what's the next meeting of that? That was what I have in the back of my brain. It's the 13th or the 14th? No, it's, it's coming this weekend. This weekend. This weekend. Saturday, the first Sunday. through the third. Friday, Saturday, first Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, Friday, so Saturday. So, one three, maybe? That's all the info from the, from the Harbor Ryan Management Committee online. Is What's it on, Is it online for the Harbor Management there, there is, yeah, there is a link to uh, <coughs> meeting, meeting minutes, agendas. Um, so, I, I think, right? Isn't, isn't there a, a web page? It's hard to find, but there, it is on the website. Yeah, so if you do a search on the, on the yeah, main page, it'll bring it up and you okay. can see what the updates are. So, press the Okay. Come on, Dan, get with the program. <laughs> I'm slacking. So, uh, communication correspondence, we don't have anything for that. Additional topics. Um, yeah. I think everyone voted for it. Yeah. yeah. Make a motion that we adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Get my extension there. I didn't even get to make it. But yeah, I said goodbye. Too late. I think my priority is second. Was that Sandy? Hmm? Anything. For the record. For the record on uh, the second of the motion to adjourn. To adjourn. I'm always on the record to second. <laughs> okay, so there's a, may, a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any discussion? Not early, but I'll go along with it. Um, oh, you didn't want to? I never want to. All right, let's <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I got sidetracked here. Yes. Yes. Crucial moment. Marjorie, can you vote, please? <laughs> I vote to adjourn. <laughs> yes. And I vote no. Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for the talk, Yvonne. You know, I should have seen that coming. Um,